Toby Hooper sadly passed away recently, and on that note, we've decided to do something slightly different this week. We're going to do kind of a retrospective, look, look back on his career. Um, of course, he is mostly famous for doing films like Texas Chainsaw and Poltergeist, so we've decided we're going to look at a couple more obscure films of his. Yeah, um, if you don't know anything about him, he was born in uh, Austin, Texas in 1943. He started out uh, making documentaries and then made his first feature film in 1969. And then a few years later in 74, he made Texas Chainsaw and that you know, put him on the, on the map. And he was quite active from then on, um, definitely in the 80s with um, Poltergeist, obviously in the early 80s. And then he made the sequel to Texas Chainsaw, which... Um, you know, it gets a bad rep, I think, but it's, you know, it's okay. It's a bit crazy. A bit um, crazy. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> yes, as you mentioned, he was a documentary filmmaker. Um, I saw, I watched an interview with him. He said he produced uh, PSI films, which I assume is public service films. Ah, right, yeah. That kind of thing. How not to fall down the stairs and how to pick up a box properly, things like that. I imagine, I don't know, yeah, <laughs> something like that. Um, but then from there, he went into obviously doing uh, features and script-driven films. And the first, I think he did a couple of short films. Um, the one that I've seen and you can see is The Heisters. It's a 10 minute parody of kind of um, Edgar Allan Poe films, similar to what Roger Corman was doing. It's a bit like The Raven and oh, right. Pit and the Pendulum, those kind of mm. films. It's very colourful, it's very bright. It's, it's, it's not a silent film, although there's no dialogue. It's, um, it's, it's kind of emphasis on sound effects. So crazy comic sound gags. And also the best use of the custard pie in the face cool. trick that I've ever seen <laughs> on screen. Uh, so from there, he then went on to make his first feature film, which uh, up until a few years ago was considered a lost film, uh, called Eggshells. It came out in 1969. Um, and it's, it's quite a strange piece. It's, um, it's, it's, a, it's about a communal house with, with students living in. Um, and it's set in 69 and made in 69. So obviously you had the Vietnam War going on. The film starts with a demonstration, a war demonstration, and you you led up to this this house where these young people live. And most of the most of the film, I mean, it's a it's an experimental film. It's not much of a plot. It's really a film of ideas, and there's some really cool stuff in there. But so it's these people they they party and they talk about politics and they talk about communism and they talk about the war and all those kind of things and they get stoned and. <laughs> All that thing, it all that kind 60s, of stuff. It was the 60s, it? it was yeah. the hippie. But, you know, it's a very hippie film when it feels like a hippie film. But then within that house, you've got this, this basement. There's something in the basement, something living in the basement. They talk about, in fact, at one point, they, they mention that the house they live in is haunted. And there's this strange thing. And that's where, when they go down into the basement, that's where Toby Hooper has fun with ideas mm. and he plays with animation and psychedelic colours and weird movement and there's a, a very strange scene where a guy has a sword fight with himself which is quite bizarre and, and really quite fun to watch um, I mean it's certainly like, as I said it, it is an experimental film and um, it, it's not like anything else he did after mm. although I definitely think there are links to, to Texas Chainsaw I think visually they're both quite mm. similar films I think after that well, he said he, he moved off to Hollywood after that. Yeah. So he did kind of get of, stuck in horror after he did. He did Texas Chainsaw, get very he? stuck in horror. Yeah. So, um, so that was 1969, and uh, yeah, and then obviously he went on to do Texas Chainsaw, which everyone knows about. Mm -hmm. And then he went off and he did. There was Eaten Alive. Yep, crocodile then, thing. Yeah. Crocodile film. Then Salem's Lot, which is a really great Stephen King uh, book. To it. I think it was a TV movie because it's three hours it's long mm. but it's really good it's really creepy and a uh, couple of nods there to Nosferatu as a vampire story so there's a few nods to Nosferatu and things really great film and then Poltergeist came along yep which was yep. obviously uh, Spielberg, Spielberg produced, produced and it feels very much like a Spielberg film uh, it does although I think I think actually interesting there's, there's I think there's a link between Eggshells and Texas Chainsaw Massacre I also think there's a link between Eggshells and Poltergeist because Poltergeist is about You've got this kind of peace-loving family, and as, as obviously they talk a lot about Reagan and mm. all that that was going on at the time. But then there's this evil in the house. There's this there's this dark supernatural being, which is very similar to what was also going on in Eggshells. Mm. And I think there are definitely links between those two films. Um, and then after Poltergeist, he went on to do. He did, yeah. He got a, pic a three-picture deal with Canon Films. Um, 
the first of which was Life Force, which is was based on a book called Space Vampires. Um, fortunately, it changed the name, but it is about space vampires. <laughs> Basically, there's a team of astronauts. They uh, fly into the tail of Halley's Comet and find a ship, some weird ship, and on board, they stupidly get on board, you know, as you do. And there's some humanoid people there. So um, what do you do? You know, obviously you take them on board your ship. <laughs> and uh, yeah. unsurprisingly, <clears throat> these space people um, aren't quite what they seem. And yeah, they are space vampires who, they don't drink blood, they drink your life force, hence the title. They suck your life out of you through your face. <laughs> So, which um, involves some wonderful special effects. Yeah, which, some uh, really great special effects. Yeah, it's effects. really, you know... I mean, guess looking at it now, yeah, it looks a bit cheesy, some of it, but there's some great puppet work, some awesome, awesome effects in there. And it's just a crazy film. Um, you know, it didn't do great at the box office. It went up against Cocoon. I'd much rather watch Life Force, if I'm honest. But, you know, the public wanted to watch Cocoon. <laughs> so... Um, you know, it didn't do great, but you know, it's a it's a cracking little film. Well, it's not a little film, but for, for Toby Hooper, it was a big budget film. <coughs> um, filmed here, it was filmed Set. here. Yep, it's got lots of British actors in it. Um, Patrick Stewart is a, has got a small role in there. He still doesn't have much hair. Poor old Patrick, <laughs> even all those years ago. Um, yeah, and uh, it's just it's just a, a a fun film. If you don't mind some crazy space vampires that don't mind getting naked. No, <laughs> yeah, it's a bit, bit new to you now. There is, it? there is, <laughs> and um, <clears throat> yeah, it's 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 definitely worth a watch, I think. And then after that, um, on his his three picture deal, he did um, Texas Chainsaw Two. He and did Texas Chainsaw Massacre for... Two, and then he also um, yeah he remade Invaders from Mars. Oh yeah, that was it. Which yeah. is really uh, well, I really like it. It wasn't. Mm. It, I don't think it had much success at all. Um, it's uh, well, obviously a remake of the 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 fifties B movie. Um, but the effects got some really interesting effects in there, and um, and uh, the actress Karen Black, who I was a great kind of seventies actress, uh, she's in there and she's she's great in there. Um, but it's uh, I, I I like it. Have you seen it? No, you should see it. Have, it's, yeah. it's not great, but it's got some really again. I, cause I, I think I think the interesting thing with Toby Hooper, he was an ideas man. Mm. Whether he was not, he maybe he wasn't the, the greatest filmmaker ever. Yeah. He was definitely an ideas man, and in all his films, there are really interesting ideas mm. and, and effects. And I think that's what he probably will be. Well, no, he'll probably be remembered for Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. But I think it would be nice if he is kind of because he's up there with people like Wes Craven, who was mm. an ideas man, John Carpenter, those kind of horror filmmakers. That, yeah, you yeah. know. So um, yeah, and then after that, he did uh, Spontaneous Combustion, which was uh, stars Brad Dourif, and it's a well, he's a guy that that can set fire things. Yeah. There's an X Files episode. Yeah, I was going to say a little bit, bit mm. a little bit similar to that. Um, and then after that, I, I haven't actually seen. I don't think I've seen anything after that. I haven't seen Toolbox Murders, which is one I really want to see. I mean, that uh, was a remake. a remake. It was, it was a decent remake, um, but it was a remake. But then I suppose the Invaders of Mars from Mars was as well. But um, it's you know, it's it's all right. That looks quite vicious. I hadn't seen that film, but it looked quite vicious. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's yeah, it's quite. A bit yeah, like Texas. A little bit. I mean, I would say Texas is a, is a nastier watch. You know, I remember when I first saw it, uh, probably about 20 years ago, it just made me feel dirty afterwards. I wanted to take a shower. Yeah, a little bit like um, Henry Portrait of a Syracuse. Yeah, so yeah, another grimy, gritty, horrible film that film. you just feel uncomfortable after you've watched. Yeah, yeah. I think... Um, and there's not many films that do that. I think, you know, not Texas many, Chainsaw no. is, is definitely... That that shows the power of it that it just yeah because yeah, it's not particularly it's not gruesome it's not gory no no I mean yeah it's it's a bit like I would say <clears throat> similar to Jaws in the way it doesn't show you a lot for much of the film you know you don't really see you, know, you really see, we see all the the shark attacks from above the water so you can imagine what's going on underneath which you know you don't really want to think about and Texas Chainsaw is much the same you don't see a lot of what. Leatherface does, you know, there's the part where he whacks the guy over the head with a mallet and then drags him down the corridor and then slams that metal door shut. And then you're left to wonder what is happening behind there yeah. with this horrible man, if that's what he is, yeah. <laughs> with, you know, what he's doing to him. And um, so, yeah, I think, you know, that toolbox Great. is probably a bit more you know, like, like your traditional slasher where you see a lot more stuff going on. Sure. So yeah. it's gorier. But it's probably not as 
uncomfortable to watch, so to speak. I don't know. It depends on how many horror films you've seen, you know. I guess as to uh, how much you can take. <laughs> so, few. Yeah, exactly. Few so, I think you'll be fine with it. I think, but. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so the big question is of the films we've spoken about, can you <laughs> can you see them? Can you see them? You Where can, can you see them? Well, shall I go as you I go went, first. I'll go first. <laughs> okay, well, so I spoke about the Heisters, the short film and Eggshells, which you can see. Um Arrow Video released uh when was it, a few years ago, a couple of years ago? Yeah, uh, three or four years ago. Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two. Um which actually in in my in my opinion, I personally think Eggshells should have been on a disc with the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre because stylized, stylistically and visually they're they're, they're kind of you know a bit of a double bill going on mm. with the two of them. They're very different. Obviously, Eggshells is more kind of about beauty and strangeness and all that kind of stuff, whereas Texas Chainsaw is much more about the evil and, and and nastiness of the world. But visually and stylistically, I think they they have more in common than Eggshells and this one does. But this is a great film. And this is a great disc. That, um, that was a limited edition, so uh, if you just pick up the normal version, I don't think it'll have eggshells on. So you'll need to. Oh, see. is it not? I don't think so. I, think oh, I didn't need know to that. seek out the. Uh, that, I will seek that out. Seek, seek out this one. Yeah. But what I can say about this, and I should say about this, is that both the heisters and eggshells was beautifully restored by Mark Rance. Uh, Mark Rance, who works at Watchmaker Films, who I was very lucky enough to work with for about a year, a couple of years ago, and. Um, one thing, Mark is like second to none. His knowledge of film is just just incredible, and he does these amazing restorations um, on films, and it's, it's just well worth seeking him out because he's he's really interesting. And Life Force, what about Life, Life Force? Life Force, uh, like Texas Chainsaw Two, was released um, by Arrow. Still widely available if you want to watch it. Um, there's no limited edition. Well, this is obviously in a still book, but that's the only limited thing about it. Um, but yeah, again, it's as usual with Arrow, you know, it all looks lovely. There's loads of extras, there's a booklet in there and all the all the sorts of stuff. You've got two cuts in there. I think there's the the theatrical cut and the international cut, which are slightly different um, if you're into that sort of thing, watching different versions of the film. Great. So we hope you enjoyed our little tribute to Toby Hooper and um, yeah, and hopefully you, you'll discover some of his films that you maybe hadn't seen before. Oh yes, and on that note, um, we'll put a link to Arrow because, of course, they released uh, Texas Chainsaw Massacre Two and Life Force, and I think they did Eaten Alive. Yeah, yeah, as well. they released that as well. Yeah, yeah, and also I was just thinking um, because uh, Texas Chainsaw Two, the one we have, is limited edition, you can actually see uh, the heisters and eggshells on Mark's uh, Vimeo page. So I'll put a link to that as well if you want to check. You can rent or buy them on Vimeo. Uh, so we'll put a link to that too. Which is all about the free advertising. Is what Which is all about the free advertising <laughs> for both those guys. Exactly. Um, so yeah, we, uh, we hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, thank you for watching. Yep, subscribe, like, comment, all that stuff. Share it. Um, yep, yep, watch our on. other videos. They're coming right up in a few seconds. They are. We're um, on Twitter and we're now on Facebook. Yep, so those links are down there as well. Check so check too. those out. Yep. And uh, yeah, thank thanks, you. We'll, yeah, thanks yeah. for watching. We'll see you next time. Yeah.